Hi everyone, welcome to the Game of Thrones Epic Pre-Show. I'm Curtis Hollister. And I'm Sheldon McGilvery. And while we're all waiting to watch the latest installment of Game of Thrones, we thought it would be a cool to, uh, idea to have a pre-show um, episode where we're, that we're about to watch, basically. Es especially on Mother's Day. But we'll cover the latest episode and story to date and talk about where we think the whole thing might be going. So last week's episode was episode six, The Old Gods and the New. Mm -hmm. And um, episode seven is A Man Without Honor. And this is all on the table for today. So let's let the screaming love hammer pound away, Curtis. <laughs> and happy Mother's Day to everyone. Happy Mother's Day to all you beautiful mothers out there. You literally make the world go round. So um, this is this is a pre-show. Let's so let's do a little bit of recap quickly. Okay. Um, and anyone that would like to visit Game of Thrones TV .com, mm -hmm. There's uh, last week's episodes reviews uh, posted there. It was about 45 minutes long, um, super long. We're gonna try and keep this um, uh, post show and pre-show a little a bit lot shorter. Faster. We're yeah, kind of yeah. splitting it up before and after. So we do have a we do have a Twitter too. Yeah. If uh, they want to follow some of the content there. That's right. You can follow at Social Pixels. At social pixels on Twitter. On Twitter. So, I think we should begin at the end of the last episode because that was yep. kind of a pivotal thing that's on everybody's mind. They're going to be so. wondering what's going to happen. So, Daenerys loses three dragons. Mm -hmm. You know, she mm -hmm. was given this one responsibility to take care of three dragons, and, and her children. And their children are gone. Yeah, she is the mother of dragons. She's the mother of dragons. She is. Uh, she's dragonless. She's dragonless. So, what we saw was not we have only some everybody's dead. Yeah. But. Somebody was walking away with these dragons into the Tower of the Warlocks. We, yeah, we think. We think. We think. Uh, we know that uh, at this point there's no spoiler in telling everyone that the book, uh, the Tower of the Warlocks, comes into play. Um, we don't know who else would have taken them, who else has the, uh, the gall, really, to uh, cross the Mother of All Dragons. But let's be honest. This should have happened. I mean, if, if I think if, so. if somebody with like you know all the, the yeah. these powerful mythical yeah. beasts comes along and goes, hey, listen, we're only ten or fifteen people, and uh, we'd love some shelter, it'd be like, why wouldn't you take the dragon? As we mentioned, I mean, you can't go to a city like Karth where they treasure many, many things. There's vast wealth. Uh, you've got uh, three dragons people haven't seen in uh, hundreds of thousands of years, hundreds, or hundreds thousands, of years. hundreds, hundreds of years. Of years. Yeah. Um, and uh, you, I mean, there's no question someone would realistically steal them. I know that doesn't happen in the book, but uh, I like this twist. I like this HBO twist. So one of the things that I would say about this yep. is that these guys are being, the um, the uh, writers and, and directors being a little bit tricky. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that whoever um, stole those dragons or has them right now mm -hmm. actually saved them from somebody else. Uh, well, that's interesting. That's an interesting possibility. Yes. I, uh, didn't, I didn't tell you I was going to say that. You didn't tell me you were going to say that. But uh, given the uh, the people that play the characters we've met in Karth, yeah. uh, the 13, some of those members, uh, it is it is very likely. It's very likely. I mean, I could see that uh, Zaxos there could very easily... Yeah. Um, um, be the guy that organizes the theft of the dragons mm -hmm. and goes, I can't believe that this happened to you. Mm. Even if he kills a bunch of his own men. Mm -hmm. and, then, and, and comes in as the hero. And then, and comes in, or or just he owns them now and he holds he owns all the them. cards. Or, he wants to there, as we know from the books, yep. there is a kind of a hero that comes along, mm -hmm. a guardian, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, what happens if he was the guy? That stole them? Or that comes in as the that hero? That took them yeah. to, to stop these other guys from stealing because it looked like mm. the the, the uh, courtyard was covered with a bunch of people we've never seen before. You're jumping ahead. I'm jumping ahead. You're but, jumping ahead. But but, but w will the from a pre-show point of view will that character be reintroduced in this episode? I think that would be epic, epic, awesome. I think that's uh, maybe you should write for HBO. As a matter of fact, they keep calling. Yeah, they keep calling. They do. I just want to see the tower burn down because those uh, those warlocks were creepy, man. Yeah, those very, are very not creepy. the guys you're like if your girlfriend's really drunk. Yeah, you know, say hey, listen, can you just take care of her? Well, yeah, I'm just gonna be yeah. gone for an hour. They or actually so. do that little twitch I have where I smile and, and then drop my smile very quickly when I'm drunk. So. Yeah, we have to be careful. I, uh, that we don't drink too much wine because otherwise we'll have that blue blue mouth. Look. Not not like last time. A couple of other things yep. was, um, obviously, um, um, was it uh, Osha or Asha, I keep forgetting her name, basically um, bedded down with a boy, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, Theon, um, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. made escape out of Winterfell with Rickon and um, and Bran, which was great. Yep. Not, a, not a pivotal scene from the point of view that we know that these guys are, have gotten away, but mm -hmm. not from the point of view of kind of belaboring the storyline. No, and but that's not the only storyline in Winterfell right now, right? We've got uh, we've got uh, Roose Bolton uh, committing uh, the Dreadfort to uh, what he says will be a uh, garrisoning of Winterfell yeah. and uh, over, throwing uh, you know Theon out on his ass, which he deserves. 
but uh, we're not sure where that might go. And Bruce Bolton has his own bastard named Ramsey. Well, he's talking about yeah. Ramsey Bolton leading the charge on this. Yeah, so. he has his own bastard, and he's talking about that. And it's, what's said in the books is that um, the Boltons are, or the Dreadfort is feared, and the Starks are loved. Mm -hmm. So these guys are significant players within the North, Definitely. and they are like the other major house, effectively. I th yeah, I think they so, are, too. Like, yep. I mean, there are a lot of other major houses, but... They are a major force. The thing is, question, or I guess in question too, is Theon's under the impression he will be reinforced shortly uh, by a few, uh, by a, a, I think a number like five hundred. But so, so who's going to get here first? Are we? We have another battle on our hands. I'm but, not sure. But what we to know expect. that he hasn't really told anybody that he's done this. Yeah. So the only way that he can tell them is he's already taken this, sent some crows out, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, say, hey, listen, I know this wasn't part of the plan, mm -hmm. and I know this had nothing to do strategically with what you had already set up. But I thought I'd take the most significant um, asset in the north. But he wants to please. With, he wants to please with, Papa with uh, fifty guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this will probably displease Papa. What a what an inner struggle Theon's going through here, right? He's uh, he's kind of grown up with the Starks, and mm -hmm. uh, but he's he just so badly wants to impress his father that he's now in a position to uh, have taken Winterfell and to hopefully, I think he believes this will uh, appease his father and bring him back into uh, into the Iron Isles. Uh, uh, you know, taking over. Into favor. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. into favor, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the lordship is still up for grabs. And and the thing that he's not in on the joke is that this, that will never happen because no one likes him, no one exactly. knows him. Yeah. And and everyone's hating on this guy, but he's had a kind of a tough go, if you really think yep. about it. He's, he's had no identity. Mm -hmm. um, jump to uh, John and Egret. That's a, that's a pretty important tangent in the storyline. John does play a kind of a, yep. a longevic role throughout mm -hmm. all the books. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, without trying to spoil it, he is a major character. Major character. Um, and he's all of a sudden um, being enticed to... Um, well, the last thing we saw was him dry humping with uh, Egret. That's right. Yeah, that's the, right. The, 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 now, little... the, the new wildling he finds himself lost in the frost fangs with. The little fire-haired... Yeah. Minx. Yes, the little fire-haired minx. Dry humping, uh, actually, I think it was more her dry humping and him asking her to stop. So. And as the book goes, al although... Um, That's an example of his courage again, by the way. That he's resisting. Oh, he didn't want her to, yeah, he just stop, stop, stop. Remember we were talking about stones. They didn't continue that. They Ice cubes, actually. They didn't perfect. continue that scene for very long. No, they didn't. Yeah. But we knew it was going just on, say there we, was, We knew it was going there's on. There's more ice melting than we... We know no, those wildling yeah. women. I mean, the, the wild is in the name. Hmm? Yeah, wild. I thought and you were going to say ing. No, egret. The wildling oh, is in the yes, name. Yes, yes, Wild. Watch out for them. They bite. I'm going to write I'm all sure. the, I'm writing these points down. Write these points down. Important for the after show. Um, what else have we got? I think we um, we also had a, uh, a bit of uh, action at Rob Stark's camp. Um, besides Roose Bolton committing to, uh, you know, send Ramsay over from the Dread Fort to reinforce Winterfell or to check out what's going on or to, I guess, to yeah. overthrow Theon. Um, Rob, or, Rob's been kind of cozying up to, uh, it looks like he's sort of... Yeah, this he's playing. He's playing the field out there. Character he's got that's from Volantis, the hot um, Spanish one you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. That she's from Volantis, and yep. you don't really know much about her from the books, which is a nice. That's actually nice in a lot of it ways. Is nice. I think I think it's good that they they veer off the story. It's a mysterious plot line here, um, but I don't think it's going to be very significant, other than it changing the course of um, kind of power in the north. Okay. I mean, I mean, in the sense that... That sounds significant to me. I mean, it is, but it was also significant in the right. book, too. Right. So this character, although it wasn't a character in the books, is still going to play that role of, mm -hmm. of having a kind of a shift of power in the North. And we had uh, Caitlin Stark and uh, Brienne show up at mm -hmm. Rob's camp as well. I have to say, Brienne is a character yeah. that, when you read it in the books... You really cheer for her. Mm -hmm. You know, she seems very awkward, yep. and I mean, she's definitely a Goliath and so forth. But I, I think they picked a, a really right. great person for if, this. If anybody out there has ever read the book uh, *Ugly Duckling*, I mean, we got it right here, Brianna. She's she is definitely not attractive, but you love her to death. There's something. Yeah. That there's just something very, very simple and very honorable about uh, honorable about that. Yeah, you want her to win. You right? do want her to win. You know that. Yeah. And what you fear, it's like the person that you fear about going into a battle is that you feel like she's going to lose every battle she gets into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, and that, that, that is going to be a storyline that continues without spoiling anything, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, other kind of major things. Uh, we have uh, well, we had the riot when we left the last episode. The riot in King's Landing. Yeah. And the last thing I remember seeing was that wicked ass epic actor. Uh, you know, Peter Dinklage uh, slapping, bitch slapping Joffrey, which everybody, I'm sure, was happy to see. I, for one, was happy to see Joffrey bitch slapped. But will this have repercussions in this episode? I don't know. 
I, you know, he may be Hand of the King, but Joffrey, we know, is a very unpredictable character. Mm -hmm. uh, he's known to, I mean, behead people, so uh, people that uh, that shouldn't be beheaded. So I don't know where that's going. I think what's, what's kind of probably a, a question mark for everybody is, yeah. why are they keeping Sansa around? I mean, mm -hmm. they're keeping her around as a hostage, yes, yeah. but there's this promise that she's going to be married to Joffrey, yeah. um, and it just doesn't seem to make sense. Because although it would yeah. help to unify them with the North, it would be such a contrived thing that doesn't, like, after you kill someone's father mm -hmm. and you, I mean, you try to kill the rest of their, her family, it doesn't seem like a long-term alliance. Yeah, and, they, and they've been known to kill off uh, characters with more momentum yeah. already in the show, right? So it, it is interesting that she's there. I think that uh, it's tied to something with Joffrey, I think. Uh, Sansa represents House Stark in King's Landing right now, and all of his vehemence, all of his anger is sort of channeled into mm -hmm. his abuse of her, which we've all witnessed on the show, which is probably one of the reasons we all hate the guy so much. I mean, not the actor, of course, but jumping, the character Joffrey. Jumping quickly to the vectors I'd of like the story. I'd like to bitch slap Joffrey. The, the vectors of the story within uh, King's Landing. Yeah. We've got wildfire. Mm -hmm. We've got... Um, Complete discontent amongst the people. True. We've got the hand of the king basically fighting with his sister and obviously with the, the king right now. The hound is uh, loyalty is kind of wavering. He's Yeah, the Clegane seems to be always been yeah. around uh, House Lannister, yeah. but he seems to be his own man and he is kind of defined a lot in the books about how he is not his brother, Gregory. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's not the mountain. Yeah, and I mean, and he wants to kill the mountain. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So that would be an interesting thing to see the hound and the mountain kind of go at it, and ideally, one of them dies. Well, we could place a bet, maybe. If we if we could have like a hypothetical fight between them, I would probably throw my money in with the hound. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, he, even if he got cut on Gregor's the face, bigger, he's, bigger. He's got that scar tissue. Yeah. That won't you won't feel much there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You won't feel much there. Don't see a, but feel you know, there is a, there's sort of an, another indirect uh, connection to King's Landing through the Onion Knight, Davos. and uh, Davos, Davos and Seward. Stannis yeah. and. Uh, and Sir Davos Seaworth uh, leaving, leading the, uh, the, uh, the you know, large group of uh, ships into uh, King's Landing here. That, mm -hmm. I think that was Stannis' plan. We didn't have a, much of an update last, uh, last episode, so I'm wondering where that might come into play. If that will come into play this episode, that would be majorly cool. Let's jump to a couple forward-looking things before we run out of time. Yep. So um, one of the things that I'd like to say is um, the episode's called A Man Without Honor. Mm -hmm. Who is the man? A man without honor. Very interesting. Well, right now, the one with the least honor that I can assume would be uh, Theon Greyjoy. Theon Greyjoy? I would think it would be Theon yeah. Greyjoy. Yeah, he's, 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 he has no honor. Um, um, but maybe it doesn't mean that, maybe it's not that obvious. John, and who's judging the honor? Who's judging the honor? That's exactly. an important question as well. So that so, would be the main plot of the storyline this episode. Like, I, I've always thought you have honor. I think you're a very honorable man. Well, I'm a man. poor judge. You're quite sexy, man, too. Uh, honorable and sexy, actually. <laughs> yeah. Which is why we like to have our wine and do our show. I we mean, like to rock it. We like to rock the, what we say last week, the global tickle trunk, and this week it's the love hammer. Yeah, yeah. the screaming love hammer. The, yeah, the screaming, so the screaming love hammer. So, um, so uh, let's look at our characters. Mm -hmm. We know that we've got um, uh, John up in the north who's being tempted. Now, hold on, though. He also, according to the guys that he was with, Curran Halfhand and stuff, he could be the man without honor, too. In that it looks like he may have abandoned the, the watch here for Egret. I mean, he's gone. He's gone missing with the wildling yeah, I mean, woman. Let's go, he be couldn't honest, kill. If he goes into the end zone with Egret. Yep. Um, so from their perspective, it might be Jon Snow who has no honor. That's right. That's um, right. Um, and it could be. What about Littlefinger? I mean, people don't think he has a lot of honor. But we've already known that. That's not it exactly. It's not yeah. an episode to base anything. Uh, on. Unless something new happens, like you've, you've alluded to, maybe the Dreadfort, uh, the Dreadfort being a powerhouse in the north. Winterfell being weak at the moment, Ramsay Bolton, someone who has no status, or sorry, I should, sorry, Ramsay Snow at the moment, having no status, uh, leading that charge. I mean, uh, I don't, I'm not, I'm making predictions here, but that could be something that that blindsides us tonight. My, my feeling is that yep. a man without honor implies a uh, a treason of some level, right? Yep, is sure. that you've made a promise sure. and you've broken the promise. Mm -hmm. So the people that have kind of made promises are like the Boltons to mm -hmm. the Starks yep. in the north. Um, the uh, Theon Greyjoy has not made any prom promises, so I don't think it's him. Mm -hmm. um, we've got Daenerys Targaryen. And we already despise him, so. Yeah, Daenerys Targaryen um, with a couple of people around her mm -hmm. that have... We know that um, Jorah Jor Marmot mm -hmm. um, was giving information to the spider mm -hmm. back in the day. Mm -hmm. But Daenerys doesn't know that. No, not yet. 
So that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Uh, so maybe there's lots of men without honor. Yeah. Yeah, it could. I mean, it could. We could. We're t we're looking at about five different options here for sure. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody out there also also obviously thinks uh, they may know might know who this is alluding to tonight, you know, throw a comment on the blog. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you do want to visit uh, the uh, past video, I know we're a little late to the game in doing these reviews. You can go to uh, YouTube.com/socialpixels, mm -hmm. or you could more easily go to Game of Thrones TV .tumblr .com. Yeah, um, or you can also leave a palm or, co or a comment. I should say or a post. I was gonna say a, a comment or a coast. Yeah, but a, that a would coastal, be the wine. That would be the wine comment. talking. Yeah. yeah. A coastal yeah. palmant. Daddy loves his wine. Yes. Great. Yes, absolutely. Um, and um, please uh, comment on, on on the videos. Definitely uh, pass them on mm -hmm. um, in, into Facebook and so forth. And if there's something you'd like to see us talk about, or if there's a point that we've gotten wrong, which we have in the past, yep. Um, no bones about uh, about correcting the situation. I think we uh, highlighted that the hound was a knight, which he's not. Yep. Um, and uh, I think I, I that said was about said, ex uh, genius. I said Roderick Payne, but it's actually Roderick Castle. So Roderick Castle. Uh, um, yep. So definitely, um, definitely correct us because by no means uh, um, the hound may not be a knight, but he's he's damn near close. Yeah. He's a he's a damn sexy he, lookalike. He's a spinning murder machine. He's a he spinning is. murder machine and a damn sexy lookalike to a knight, right? So let's. Credit where credit's due. Okay, so let's end the pre-show. Okay. We're going to do an after show, yep. um, and that should be airing live also on mm -hmm. GameOfThronesTV.tumblr.com at approximately 10.30. Mm -hmm. um, at 10.30. Yep. And, um, um, and and that will be available after the fact as well. Um, what we do with that, we, uh, we, we've we touched on a little bit of uh, sort of a summary of, uh, of where we're taken and during the episode. So we go into a little bit of depth. We ask a lot of questions. We kind of... Overanalyze the hell and we out don't of it. try to spoil it, and we don't we don't try to spoil it, but we uh, but we do give you uh, a lot more analysis and in depth uh, look at the show. So uh, yeah. be and prepared don't for watch, that afterwards. Don't watch any of these videos that have spoilers because I mean this is a great story. There's already another mm -hmm. season that's been booked. Mm -hmm. Don't spoil it for yourself by doing that. Yep. And um, we'll um, do our very very best not to let anything slide out of here. Yeah. Um, we're both book readers and uh, avid fans of the show. Sheldon has so. read all five books. I'm four and a half books into yep. it. So but, I um, but I've been pretending since we started this not to uh, have read the books at all. So yeah. I slip up once in a while, but I don't think we're giving away anything. I feel anything. like I forget more than I remember anyway. You'll get honest content here, and we promise we'll do our best not to spoil it for you. Enjoy enjoy tonight's episode, uh, episode seven, A Man Without Honor. I'm yep. Curtis Hollister. I'm Sheldon McGilvery. We're going to be a little drunk when we come back. <laughs> yeah. So even yeah, more reason to tune in. We'll see you at 10... 30. 10.30. Okay, thanks very much.